Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar presentation. My name is Monica Conforti and I'm Assistant Dean within the School of Education here at Hofstra University. And today I'm joined by our Dean, Sean Finelli, who directs our Higher Education Leadership and Policy Studies program. So without further ado, we'll get started today. If you have any questions at any time, you may type them into the left side of your screen and we will look at them and also take some time to answer towards the end of the presentation. So here, Dr. Finelli. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us in this webinar dealing with the Higher Education Leadership and Policy Studies Program. As Monica indicated, I am the director of the program and will take you through uh, an explanation of what the program is all about and more importantly, if you are interested, how to go about applying for the program. The program is a 36 uh, semester hour program, or in the case of some students, a 36 credit hour program. Uh, it is a master's uh, in education, but we also have a strand in our education, uh, educational and policy leadership program, which is a 79 semester hour program, which is tied to the uh, master's program in higher education. The first 30 credits of the doctoral program are actually the 30 uh, credits taken from the master's program. And so the doctoral strand is actually a 49 semester hour strand. Looking at the uh, program, uh, people enter the program certainly with a career in higher education in mind. Uh, they uh, have, as graduates of the program, found positions in admissions, alumni affairs, student affairs, residential life, advisement, career counseling, and first year programs to mention just a few. If you are interested in any of those careers, then certainly this is the program for you. The program is divided into three parts. The first being the core of the program with nine classes or 27 semester hours uh, involving only higher education topics. Uh, and so there are nine classes dealing with higher education. There are two elective classes that you can choose from a wide variety of uh, options, uh, and they are leadership electives. And finally, the third and last uh, segment of the program is a capstone or independent study course, which can include an internship. And we encourage students to do the internship as well as a capstone paper. The courses need not be taken in sequential order, which really allows you to start the program at any semester, in any given semester. Uh, as you will find out in the next slide, that the program is a cohort model. And as a cohort model, you will be moving through the program with the uh, students who begin the program with you at the same time. Uh, these cohorts move through in four semesters, and we'll describe that for you in a few moments. But usually students take three courses a semester, and that allows you then to complete the program in four semesters. That would be fall, spring, fall, spring, or if you began in spring, it would be spring, fall, spring, fall. But you can also take some courses in the summertime, and that would change the number of semester, or I shouldn't say the number of semesters, but the sequencing of courses. The program can be taken entirely online, uh, or it can be taken entirely in a face-to-face -face mode, or it can be completed in, with a mixture of both online and face-to-face -face courses. The highlights uh, of the courses uh, include Student Affairs Leadership. Many of our students are interested in student affairs. Uh, there is a course in governance in higher education. The students who come to us in higher education, legal and ethical issues, planning assessment and accreditation, a very important course, contemporary issues, so that we try to uh, keep our students as current as possible with the issues that are facing higher education professionals. And finally, of course, in teaching and learning. Uh, how students in higher education go about learning and how we are providing uh, learning strategies for them in the classroom. 
The course offerings, as was pointed out uh, a moment ago, are either online or in person. And students uh, come to the program usually with a, uh, a bias toward either face-to-face or perhaps a need for online. Those students who are time-bound or place-bound, uh, of course, seek the online program, while those students who feel that they prefer a, a personal or more personal relationship with their instructor will choose the face-to-face. But it's been my experience that students who have never taken an online course once they sample a course, find that this is something that they actually find uh, as a, an effective learning uh, technique uh, that they were not familiar with and now have become more comfortable with. And so students tend to, throughout the program, mix and match, uh, take uh, only online uh, one semester, take a combination of online and face-to-face, or take a combination of only uh, face-to-face courses. You can mix and match as your uh, schedule or your needs uh, require. The financial support for the program is uh, provided through uh, some uh, scholarships that are available based on need. There are also graduate assistantships that are available. Uh, We are working within uh, various uh, student service units to ensure that our uh, students uh, obtain graduate assistantships. That is not a guarantee. Uh, But we do find that uh, our students in the higher education leadership and policy studies program are usually given first priority in the student service units, because after all, that's exactly what you are training in many instances to do, that you are preparing yourself for a career in those units. And the uh, units understand that and actually look for our students. If you need more information, you can go to hofstra.edu. SF uh, slash SFS uh, to get more financial aid information, or you can actually go to uh, the School of Education and simply go to slash SOE scholarships, and information will be available for you online. Are you ready to apply? Well, it's a very simple process that you find uh, here at Hofstra. It's all done online, and go to the Uh, link, the URL that is right there at the top of this slide. Uh, The URL will bring you to a uh, a site where you can go through electronically the submission of uh, all the items that are necessary, your transcripts. uh, And an official transcript isn't necessary initially, uh, but it will be necessary after you're accepted into the program. We are looking for an overall GPA of 3.0 or higher in your baccalaureate work. But if by chance you have fallen slightly under that, uh, you can certainly ask to be admitted conditionally, and you would then become a matriculated student with the understanding that you would complete uh, the first 12 uh, credits with a B plus or better. Uh, You're asked also to provide three references, and they should really uh, address your potential to succeed as a leader in higher education. And they can, again, be submitted directly online from the references through the online application process. And finally, we are looking for a written personal statement. Uh, And the reason for that is we want to be sure that this is the right program for you, that you're not entering a program with a misunderstanding of what the program is all about. And the second is we would like to see a sample of your writing skills. These uh, applications, when submitted, are reviewed probably within days of the submission uh, and on a rolling basis. And, of course, the question is asked, when should I apply? Well, the earlier you apply, the earlier you are able to be matriculated. And once matriculated, you are then eligible to seek a, an assistantship. Uh, assistantships uh, are only uh, given to those persons who are actually uh, matriculated here at Hofstra University. The um, need to uh, have additional questions answered, you can direct them to me here at the uh, School of Education or to the Assistant Dean uh, Monica Conforti who has a wealth of knowledge uh, and and will be very helpful in working with you, uh, answering any questions or helping you in the application uh, process. 
At this point, we would like to uh, answer the questions that have been raised, and we have a series of questions uh, that have been uh, posed by some of the participants in this webinar. The first question is, uh, can I still apply for the fall, uh, or is there a closing date? And it's a rolling registration. But as I pointed out to you, uh, you should really try to apply as soon as possible. And it's still not too late to apply actually for the summer. You can uh, send in all of your materials. And if by chance you have not assembled all of the materials, you can be accepted on a non-matriculated basis. And once accepted on a non-matric basis, uh, you continue to process your application. Once your application is fully complete and you've been accepted, all of the coursework that you've taken as a non-matriculated student counts toward the uh, program requirements. How do you go about applying for a merit scholarship? A question has been asked. And you do that through, as we pointed out, a um, through the website that we uh, identified, but you can also do it by contacting Monica Conforti directly. And that's at hofstra.edu slash H-E-L-P-S, the HELPS program, Higher Education Leadership and Policy Studies. So scholarships are available. Uh, you can uh, direct your question about scholarships directly to me uh, with my email address uh, that's given right here on the screen. Uh, a number of people um, uh, accepted into the program. Probably within a given semester, we will accept anywhere between 12 uh, to 15 people within the program. And so that's typically the cohort that moves through the program. One of the factors I think that brings students to this program are the uh, good experiences uh, and very, very um, uh, rewarding experiences that they've had at the undergraduate level, working within a, uh, a student affairs office, a student life, uh, perhaps Greek life, uh, perhaps student government, uh, but nothing in a formal way. And so a large number of our students come directly out of a baccalaureate program into this higher ed program because of their uh, very, very uh, enjoyable experiences. And sometimes uh, an, a, um, an epiphany occurs. They have been majoring as a sociology major, but they realize working with students within student affairs or within some college uh, administrative office is what they really would like to do. And so they are the students that come to us. But in addition to that, we have students that come to us with uh, working experience in higher education. They have begun their uh, career at a college or university with their baccalaureate degree, but now in order to advance, uh, realize that they need a master's degree. So we have a combination of students coming to the program, students directly out of an undergraduate experience uh, that included some aspect, and it doesn't have to include, but frequently does include some aspect of uh, involvement in student affairs or student life, or we have people who are currently employed and want to uh, seek a mas master's degree in order to advance in the profession. Do um, our graduates fare well is a question in the, um, the, um, this webinar. And the answer is extremely well. In fact, uh, you will find that probably jobs in higher education uh, leadership positions are growing in number. Uh, we uh, find that our students not only get jobs, but actually once employed, actually call back to the university and to me to indicate that there are other jobs and they would like to see a graduate of the Hofstra program join them in the institution that they are now employed at. So job opportunities uh, do exist. Uh, we can't tell you uh, that they are going to be uh, exactly in the location that you want them to be, but certainly there are a wide uh, variety of opportunities that present themselves uh, each semester. And we share with these students opportunities as they arise, as we are notified of uh, positions that are being announced in a college or a university. We share that information with all of our uh, students in the HELPS program. Do we offer support uh, for conferences, professional conferences? And the answer is yes, we have HEGSCA 
which is um, the uh, head, head, right? Hedska, which is the higher education students uh, uh, in the higher education program. And the um, students there are, are given some monies uh, from the university, and part of the monies that are used by that group uh, actually go toward the uh, professional conferences. Uh, just recently, uh, a number of our students attended uh, a professional conference where they actually had job interviews lined up uh, before they attended the conference. The part-time employment uh, question arises. Uh, they are available here. There are uh, assistant uh, uh, student aid positions uh, that are paid for on an hourly basis. Uh, we find that some of our students uh, like that opportunity because it fills in the time uh, between uh, classes or when they are not in class. And it gives them an opportunity to complete the program while at the same time having some part-time employment. One of the things that I'd like to point out is that our classes are offered from 4.30 to 6.20 or 6.30 uh, to 8.20 uh, one day each week. Uh, and that allows students to have a full-time position in another university or anywhere outside of the university or within the university and still be able to take classes. Those classes, by the way, meet only once each week so that if you were scheduled for a particular class that met at 4.30 on, let's say, Thursday, that's exactly what would happen. It would meet for one day on Thursday from 4.30 to 6.20 or perhaps at 6.20 to uh, 6.30 rather to 8.20. So there are only single days, and that allows you to take uh, three credits, or rather three courses, or nine credits um, in a semester and probably only attend the, uh, the, the campus or be here on campus uh, for two days. In other words, you would take one course on one day and two courses on another day. And we try to arrange the schedules. The schedule, by the way, is guaranteed. We have a block schedule that uh, extends out to... Uh, beyond 2019, uh, which guarantees uh, classes every semester, and you will therefore know exactly when classes are offered uh, with a guarantee that they will be offered. And so you can plan your program, as I do with the students, uh, to ensure that they uh, meet the needs or the, the requirements of the program uh, within the shortest period of time possible. The question again is, uh, can I balance this uh, job, or not job, but this um, a program with a full-time job. And as I just pointed out, if you are here uh, from 4.30 to 6.20 or 6.30 to 8.20, that usually allows you to have a full-time job. If you're not able to make the 4.30 class, you can certainly then take the classes that begin at uh, 6.30. So yes, you can uh, balance a full-time job. Another question has been raised, uh, do I um, need to change my plan of study uh, due to outline, uh, outside responsibilities, what, what can happen? And the answer is each semester I meet with students to be sure that they are still on track to complete the degree in the shortest amount of time possible or to adjust the schedule of classes that we had programmed initially uh, because of changing uh, responsibilities, personal uh, or job responsibilities. So I work closely with the students. I meet with them uh, during the semester prior to the, uh, the following semester so that we can plan a schedule and be sure that they are still following uh, the course schedule that we had worked out initially or adjusting it if the need arises. And I've talked about, uh, someone has just asked about the, uh, the timeline or the uh, length of time that it takes to complete the program. You can complete the program in two academic years. You can do that by taking three face-to-face -face courses each uh, of four semesters, fall, spring, fall, spring, or as I pointed out, spring, fall, spring, fall. And you can also complete it by taking two online classes in fall, spring, summer, fall, spring, summer, or again, you can begin in any semester and still complete the program within two academic years. But in the case of an online program, doing it within uh, six uh, uh, semesters. The uh, semesters uh, can also uh, include in the face-to-face, uh, the -face, 
you could take two face, uh, two semesters of only face to face courses fall spring and then take two courses online in the summer. And so that would shorten the length of time and you would actually then do fall, uh, spring, summer, fall and be completed by the following fall. So that is really, a, a, I guess, a, a, an example of the flexibility that exists within the program. I'm looking to see if there are additional questions, and I don't see any. I've gone through this and uh, done it perhaps in, in a somewhat rapid way because I know that your time is valuable. Uh, but feel free to contact uh, Monica Conforti. Uh, the information is right here on the screen, or myself. If you have any further questions or you have an interest uh, in exploring further uh, the higher education and uh, higher education leadership and policy studies, the HELPS program here at Hofstra University. And I want to thank you personally for joining us in this webinar, and we hope to see you in the future. I'll just echo that. wanted to thank all of you for attending today. We will be sending out a copy of this presentation for your review at a later date, as well as copies of the slides. We hope to hear from you again. We invite you to campus, of course, to see the university if you are local. And again, we hope that you'll continue to explore and potentially apply to the program. Thank you and enjoy your weekend. Good.